Hello friends, in this video, we are going to discuss about the cube config and the context in Kubernetes. Let us start with cube config. Cube config is a YAML file to configure the access to the Kubernetes cluster. If the clients want to access the Kubernetes cluster, they can use the cube config file to access the API server. Here, the clients means the administrators of the cluster and the developers and the other team members by providing corresponding authentication information and also the cube let in worker node also would access the API server by using the cube config file and the scheduler and controller manager components inside the control plane would also access the API server by using cube config file. What is the information present in the cube config file? The cube config file contains information about the clusters that means the cluster API server URL and the certification authority data of the cluster with which corresponding certificates would be signed and then the users who want to access the cluster with corresponding client certificates or corresponding service account tokens that user data would be maintained in cube config file and also it contains the information about the context we will discuss about this context in the next slide so once we have the cube config how to access the cluster we can have a cube config environment variable which can point to the location of this cube config file and then the next kubectl commands will access the information from this cube config file if we don't provide this environment variable then we can provide a cube config option with kubectl command as well. If you don't provide environment variable as well as cube config option, it would search the configuration file under home slash dot cube directory. So if you have a cube config file, then we can move that file under home directory slash dot cube directory so that that will be used by default. So now let us see the context. Here the context combine or group access parameters with a particular name. For example, we have multiple clusters, cluster 1 and cluster 2 and we have multiple users like user 1, user 2, user 3. If user 1 wants to access a particular namespace in a cluster 1, then we can define a context by combining the user 1, the namespace 1 and cluster 1. Similarly, we can define context 2 which combines user 1, namespace 2 and cluster 1. Similarly, for other users, for example, for user 2, if the user 2 wants to access namespace 2 in cluster 2, then we can define a context with user2, namespace2 and cluster2. So this way we can define multiple contexts which group corresponding access parameters like users, namespaces and clusters. So when we define a context, we do not need to mention the namespace, the cluster or the user when we execute kubectl commands every time. We just need to define the context and we need to set a particular context before executing corresponding kubectl commands. So now let us see how to create a cube config file and then we'll see how to access the kubenetz cluster by using cube config file and also we'll see how to create different contexts and also we'll see how to use those contexts to access the kubenetz cluster so let us see all these things in the demo let us start for this demo i'll use these details i have already created the namespaces cacd dev cacd qa monitoring dev and monitoring qa so these are the four namespaces and i have already set up two users john is a developer he will access cacd dev and monitoring dev namespaces and rosie is from qa team so she will have access to cacd qa and monitoring qa i have already set all these permissions via rbac how to set up a user and how to assign the permissions these were already discussed in the previous video i will put that link in the description we'll use these details to set up various contexts to access the cluster so let's start the demo now this is the cluster we'll use for the demo for the demo i have created some of the namespaces let us see the namespaces in this cluster here we have different namespaces i have created cacd dev cacd qa monitoring dev and monitoring QA namespaces. We will use these namespaces for the demo. I also set up two users for the demo. So here we have two users John and Rosie. We have already seen how to set up a user with client certificates in a Kubernetes cluster. Please go through the video in the description to know how to set up a user with client certificates in Kubernetes cluster. So for this demo we have two users John and Rosie with corresponding client certificates. We also have the cluster CA certificate which will be used to connect to the Kubernetes cluster using TLS. So these client certificates will be used for authentication. So here we will treat John as a developer and Rosie as a QA member. So John will have access to CACD dev namespace and monitoring dev namespace and Rosie will have access to CACD QA and monitoring QA namespaces. I have already created the role and role bindings for these namespaces to assign the permissions for John 
to dev namespaces like for cicd dev and mounting dev namespaces and for rosy i have created roles and role bindings for cicd qa and mounted qa namespaces so let us see this so these are all the roles in all the namespaces so here dev role is created for both cicd dev namespace and mounting dev namespace similarly qa role is created in cicd qa and mounted qa namespaces similarly i have created role bindings to attach these roles to john and rosy respectively so let us see the role bindings now so these are the role bindings here so this role binding assigns the dev role to john in cicd dev namespace similarly this binding assigns the dev role to john in mounting dev namespace similarly for rosy these role bindings assigns the qa role to rosy in both the qa namespaces for this demo i also have created example pods in the namespaces like cicd dev cicd qa mountain dev and mountain qa let us see them so here we can see this is the pod which is created under cicd dev namespace similarly this is cicd qa pod which is created under cicd qa namespace similarly mountain dev pod and mountain qa pod in mountain dev and qa respectively so let us set up the cube config file with the cluster information and the users information once that is done we'll add different contexts to kubernetes config file so let us see if any config file already existing here we don't have the dot cube directory and we don't have any file here so let us create a cube config file now so for that we'll use kubectl config command first we'll add the cluster information for adding the cluster we need to use set cluster sub command here we have a single cluster so let us provide a name for that now we need to provide the server url for the cluster so this is the url of api server now we need to add the certificate authority data so for that there is an option embed search now we need to provide the certificate authority of the kubernetes cluster this is the file that contains the certificate authority information so let us execute this so here there is no data this is only certificate authority so let us execute again now the cluster is set with name my cluster so let us verify if dot cube directory is created here and inside the directory we have a config file created so let us open this file so here we can see under clusters we have the cluster data we have added one cluster here with name my cluster and this is corresponding url of the server and this is the certificate authority data corresponding to this cluster so if we have multiple clusters then we can use the same command to set those clusters inside this config file we can also see this by using kubectl config command for this we need to provide use of command so here we can see the same information now let us configure the users first let us add the user john to the configuration file so for that we will use the kubectl config command again now we need to execute set credential sub command we need to provide the name of the user now let us add the certificates information for this user for that again we'll use embed search option now we need to provide the client key and corresponding certificate so let us execute this command so now we can see the user john is set similarly let us set the credentials for user rosy so let's execute this the user rosy also configured in the configuration file so let us view the configuration file again now in addition to the cluster we also can see the user information here under users the name john is added for that user the client certificate data and the client key data are added similarly another user name with rosy is added for this user also we can see the client certification data as well as corresponding private key data 
So this way we can set the users in the configuration file. So as of now, we don't have any context in the configuration file. Before creating the context in the configuration file, for setting up the users, we have used the client certificate. Similarly, we can use other type of credentials like username password or username token and so on. For that also, we can use the kubectl config set credential command. Here we can see various examples for setting the credentials for each of the users. So you can go through this documentation as per your requirement. For example, if you want to use the username password, we can provide these options. And if you want to use username token, then we can provide these options. This way we have multiple options to set the credentials of different users. So let us add some context here now. These contexts will be different combinations of users and namespaces in the cluster. Here we are using a single cluster. So let us start with the user John to access CICD dev namespace of the cluster my cluster. Let's set a context for this. Here we need to use set context subcommand. We can provide the context name now. So here it can be John accessing CICD dev namespace. We can also provide the cluster name here. That would be useful if you have multiple clusters. Now we need to mention the cluster users and the namespaces. So the cluster name is my cluster. Let's provide user now. And finally let us provide the namespace. Here the namespace is CACD dev. Let's execute this. So now we can see a new context is created for the user John to access CACD dev namespace from my cluster. So let us see this context in the configuration file. Now under context, we can see a new context with name John CACD dev my cluster. Here we can see the cluster name is my cluster, the namespace is CACD dev and the user is John. So if we have multiple clusters and multiple namespaces, so for different users, we can create different contexts containing the username and corresponding cluster name and the name of the namespace. Now let us add the other context as well. Now I am setting the context for content dev namespace. So let's execute this. A new context is created now. Similarly, let us add the context for the user Rosie to access CACD QA and Monitoring QA namespaces. We can see the configuration file again. Now, under context, we can see the four contexts, which are different combinations of cluster, namespace, and user. Now, let us try to access the cluster using the different contexts which we created. Before that, let us see the context. So, these are the different contexts now. Before accessing the cluster, we need to set the current context as one of these contexts. So let us set the current context. For that, we need to use use context as a subcommand of kubectl config command. So let me take this context as example. So now it is switched to this context. We can see the current context as well. So this is the same context to which we have switched now. So this means we are connected to CACD dev namespace of my cluster. So let us see the pods in this namespace of my cluster. Here we do not need to give any namespace as part of kubectl command because that is already set as part of the context. So here we can see the CACD dev pod which is running inside CACD dev namespace. So if we want to connect to other namespaces in this context, then we need to explicitly provide the namespace. For example, if we want to see the pods in monitoring dev namespace, then we need to specify the namespace explicitly. So here we can see the mountain dev pod is running under mountain dev namespace. So let us try another example with user Rosie as well. So let us change the context again. So now we are using the context to connect to mountain QA namespace of cluster my cluster using Rosie. So now we have switched to the context. We can see the current context again. 
Now let us see the pods running in this namespace. So here we can see the pod is corresponding to the mounted QA namespace. Now we have seen how to access the Kubernetes cluster using context. So when we access the Kubernetes cluster by default, it is using the file under dot cube directory. So by default, this is the file which is being used by kubectl command. We can also have the custom location which stores the Kubernetes config files. So for example, let us move this file. So now we have moved the cube config file to one example my config file under home directory. Now let us see the pods running in the cluster. Now it is not able to find the cluster and other details because it is not able to find the default config file. Now let us specify an environment variable to use my config as the cube configuration file. So let us set the variable. Let us see the pods. Now it is able to find the cluster and other information so that we can see the pods running. We can also set the cube configuration file using an option while running the kubectl command. So for that we need to specify cube config. So here we need to specify the full path of the config. Now it is able to print the pods. This way we can use custom configuration file by setting the cube config environment variable or cube config option while running the kubectl commands. So in this video we have discussed about the cube config and the context in Kubernetes. I hope this video helps. Thanks a lot for watching.